Good day, Africa and the world. My name is Akosua Prempe, reporting from the United States of Africa. Today we bring you a powerful and visionary speech from Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the president of Burkina Faso, who officially launched the 20th edition of Digital Week. In his address, he highlighted a bold roadmap for Africa's technological sovereignty, built on digital infrastructure, artificial intelligence, and youth-driven innovation. From building local data centers and citizen service houses to exposing the dangers of digital corruption and misinformation, Captain Traoré is not only redefining digital transformation, he is calling on Africa to own its future. He also delivered a strong message on how digital tools must be used to fight corruption, modernize public services, and drive national development, while emphasizing the need to educate and protect African youth from the harmful misuse of technology. This is more than a national agenda. It is a continental blueprint for how Africa can leapfrog into the future through smart investments and pan-African cooperation. So stay with us and don't forget to subscribe, like, share and comment below. Let's unite all Africans with one vision, one platform and one voice. Good morning, comrades, and thank you all for being here this morning for the launch of Digital Week. Thank you to our guest of honor, Ghana. Thank you to our brother nations of Mali and Niger, who are also here to support us in this revolution of artificial intelligence, which today is beginning to dominate the world. I would be remiss if I began to speak without first giving thanks to God and also paying a vibrant tribute to our valiant fighting forces on the ground who in recent weeks have been doing an extraordinary job. I say this because I have felt a sense of pride in recent weeks. Just when the enemy thinks they are about to make us bend, that is the moment our men's morale rebounds, and they have done exceptional work these past weeks. And I want to pay tribute to them, to congratulate them. And so I would like us to take a minute of silence, to pray for the souls of all those who have lost their lives in this fight. Thank you. The 21st anniversary then of Digital Week is upon us. That means, to put it another way, it has now been a full two decades plus one year, if I may say so, that we have been coming together and celebrating this remarkable Digital Week event. But I think this 21st anniversary should also be an opportunity to pause, to take stock of the situation, to see where we stand, so that we can project ourselves into the future. Burkina Faso has come a long way in the digital field, and I can say that we still have a long way to go. A lot has been done in the last two years, but we had a 12-point program that we want to launch in order to reach a certain level by 2030, a level that will allow us to say that in five years we have made a leap of at least 100 years. And the Minister has made a commitment with her entire team to implement this program. And rest assured that we are here to support you whenever you need to ensure this revolution is a success. Burkina Faso needs this digital revolution, which must allow us to position ourselves at a certain level of development on the world stage. Today, no matter what we want, no sector can move forward without digital technology. It's practically impossible. We just spoke about administrative burdens, red tape, and all the related issues that affect our entire population. All segments of our society are victims of the frequent delays within the administration. But only digitalization, only digital technology, can allow us to make a significant leap forward to offer fast, low-cost services, and to achieve savings that will help our administration progress. Whether it's in the field of health, education, security, or defense, all sectors today need digital technology to move forward. 
We are talking about countries that today are trying to fight a phenomenon that is a cancer on all of Africa. I'm not just talking about Burkina, but all of Africa. And that is corruption. We cannot fight corruption without integrating the digital component. If we truly want to fight corruption, we must accept the need to digitalize many procedures. We must embrace digital technology in everything we do within the administration. That is the only way we can fight corruption. And our country needs this. Our country drastically needs this, especially as we are putting a great deal of energy into digitalizing many sectors to allow us to make a significant leap forward in the fight against corruption. And so I invite you to continue in this direction, to integrate and unify all the ministries on the various platforms you are developing, so that this fight against corruption can make great strides in the next two to three years. If we also want a high-performing security instrument, we have no choice but to integrate artificial intelligence. And I think this is also an opportunity to inform many young people about the wise use of artificial intelligence using concrete examples. In matters of security and defense, let me give you an example. The analysis of certain data absolutely requires artificial intelligence to be done very quickly and to yield concrete results. So today, demographics and all the data collected by security sensors, so to speak, require rapid and concise analysis. This provides conclusions that allow our various forces to act in a timely manner and to anticipate anything that might affect our country's security. Today, in terms of defense, who wouldn't be happy to be able, from their position, to get images and coordinates of a particular situation, transmit them to a unit that already has the real-time intelligence and which must then intervene on the ground. It helps save lives because it allows us to better prepare and anticipate the situation. But all this is only possible if we seriously develop our digital infrastructure. And we are on that path because Burkina Faso, as I said, has come a very long way. We've spent all this time hosting our data abroad, which means we are not in control of the very data we produce. And we can't talk about sovereignty if we don't host our own data ourselves, the data we produce right here, and instead spend our time exposing it, putting it in the hands of others. So, the issue of sovereignty is inherently tied to the issue of digital technology. Today we are in the process of acquiring data centers so that over time we can host all the data we produce right here, locally and also the various applications that our young people are developing. And by the way, I take my hat off to them. I congratulate all the teams participating in this fight with us, because until just recently, Burkina Faso was importing even the most basic applications for our administration. We can't talk about independence and sovereignty if, just to get a small application to facilitate a service, we have to go and pay the very people who are fighting against us. Our data and all our actions, all our movements, are therefore known and seen by everyone. Today we are developing many applications in many ministries in order to move very quickly. Take the Ministry of Justice, for example. Before you had to travel far from your village to find a city just to get your certificate of nationality, for example, or a criminal record. But today, through digitalization, our engineers have created applications that allow any citizen from their location to access these services. It saves them time and energy and they no longer need to spend money and fuel to travel with all the risks of the road uh, to some other area just to get these documents. These are concrete examples that we can use and they show us that we need to advance in the digital sphere to ease the burden on our people and effectively fight corruption. That said, one might ask the question, how will the average Burkina Bay be able to access these services, since not everyone is necessarily at the same level when it comes to using phones or computers? But I have instructed the ministry, which has already devised a solution that should normally begin to be implemented in the coming weeks. We want to build in all the provinces and later in all the departments citizen houses, these will be houses where young people can go and receive support with access to Burkina Faso's entire digital package. When a citizen needs a service, they can go to these citizen houses and get access to those services. So we haven't forgotten anyone. Everyone will be served so that we can all be in the same boat with no one left behind. 
This means there are vast projects being undertaken through the ministry. And today we are recruiting 10, 20 times more engineers in the digital sector to move very quickly and make up for the delay we've experienced since our independence. In addition to all this, training is essential. We are focusing on the various schools that train engineers so that we have the necessary talent pool. And this is where I call upon the youth. This is your moment to prove that what others say about us as black people, to prove to them that it's all false. We have the intelligence, we have the brains capable of conceiving, of conceiving well, and of conceiving things that are useful for our people. And so I invite all the young people who will enroll in these various schools, who are on a quest for knowledge and engineering, to continue doing the necessary research and to develop all the IT tools our country needs, from the farmer to the administration, to give a boost to the development quest we are currently on. And in just a few weeks from now, God willing, we will officially commence the construction of another new Polytechnic Academy. This institution will be designed to fully integrate this important digital training component into its curriculum, ensuring that students receive a comprehensive and up-to-date education. As a result, fully-fledged, highly qualified engineers will graduate from these universities in only a few years, ready and prepared to serve the people. Also, while we speak of the benefits of artificial intelligence, I urge you to also begin raising awareness among the youth about the harmful effects of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a tool that should help us advance, not a tool that should disorient the youth. It must be used wisely. And that is a very important aspect. And I think that through awareness campaigns, you can do a lot among the youth to show them the harmful effects of, of of artificial intelligence as well. We are not saying it should be used for other ends. Many today already do it to scam individuals, to impersonate other people and so on, for disinformation and everything that goes with it. These practices must stop, but it is also through awareness that we can achieve this. And I am counting on the youth to make the most of artificial intelligence and work for the benefit of the nation. And no matter what anyone says, this is a field where startups are sprouting up everywhere. And they too must spread the message to make others understand that this is a field where one can succeed. So this is very important. The youth must understand that creating startups, creating small businesses in the digital sector to help and facilitate the lives of citizens, this also allows you yourselves to live with dignity in Burkina Faso. So I urge each and every one of you to embrace the digital component. I encourage you, the Ministry, to launch all the major projects and our 12-point program, the 12 commitments you've made for 2030, so that we can reach our goals well before 2030. And I hope that this is indeed possible. So I invite everyone, all ministerial departments, to pool their energies to facilitate the task for those who are supposed to support you in this digital development through artificial intelligence, and thus promote the development of our dear homeland. Thank you all very much. I wish you a very good digital week. And inshallah, we will meet again at the next session with major innovations, God willing, always for the well-being of our people. Thank you all for coming, and thank you to the brotherly nations that are here. I wish you a very pleasant stay in Burkina Faso, and may God bless our very dear homeland. Homeland or death, we will conquer. Thank you. Now I want to hear from you, our United States of Africa family. Your voice matters. One, do you believe Africa is ready to build its own data sovereignty and become independent from foreign digital control? Two, what role should African youth play in shaping the future of artificial intelligence on the continent? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and let's build the future together. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on notifications. This is the United States of Africa where every voice counts.